the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, church. Welcome to Stone Chapel United Methodist Church. I am Yu Jung Hong, the pastor here. And today is Trinity Sunday during the worship. You may feel the presence of God and the Holy Spirit may awake in your heart and mind so that you may worship God in the spirit and in truth. Let us prepare our minds and souls for the worship today.
tremble, the seas roar at the sound of your name. Yet you have chosen to come to us in love and tenderness. You have called us to be people who will act in ways of peace and justice in your world. Open our hearts and our spirits, Lord, to hear your word and have it heard to act in ministries of hope and peace for all your work. These days we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated and share with us your joys and concerns so that we can pray and give thanks together. Hi. Uh, In that case, our hymn of prayer is He is Lord, repeated twice. Start. 
start on July 1st, a new hope. Lord, bless her and guide her so that she can, that your calling and she can fulfillment in that church, Lord. Also, I lift up to Georgia's and Davis their anniversary. There are 50 years they get together and have a great life. Lord, thank you so much. You have a lot of blessing upon their life. And thank you so much for they had a really great time yesterday. Lord, we lift up the names in the Helen Winter. She has been recovering from the, the heart, open heart surgery. And she's going to have a doctor next week. Lord, give your guidance so that the doctor can help her and to get the heal in what she need. Also, we lift up the David, who is cousin of Dwight. He just diagnosed with leukemia. Lord, you are healing be upon him and give him the, your peace and comfort so that he can get in your peace and comfort whenever he may. Also, we lift up the Abby's grandfather. Lord, you are the hope. You are the healer. So that he can get in your healing and he can get the strength and then all what he need you can provide lord we pray for all those who the whom you have blessed our pilgrims whose lives that have empowered us whose influence is a healing grace we lift up them for heart For the dear friends and family members whose face we see no more, but whose love is with us forever. For the teachers and companions of our childhood and youth, and for the members of our household of faith who worship you now in heaven. For those who sacrifice themselves, our brothers and sisters, who have given their lives for the sake of others, that we may hold them all in continual remembrance and ever dance of them as with you in that city whose gates are not shut by day and where there is no night. That we may now be dedicated to working for the world where labor is rewarded, fear dispelled, and the nations make one. O oh Lord, save your people and bless your heritage day by day. We magnify you and worship your name forever and ever. And now the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. A Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. 
Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among the people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And the second reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his suffering, in order that we may also share in his glory. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the sun response. <laughs> So dramatic, so new, 
that it would be like being born again. Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, Jesus explained, he could not enter the kingdom of heaven. Nicodemus tried hard to wrap his mind around what Jesus was saying to him. Jesus knew that Nicodemus was having a hard time believing him. So he said, if you're having a hard time believing earthly things, it will be very hard for you to believe heavenly things. But you must believe that I am the Messiah. I have come to give people eternal life. Now Nicodemus was beginning to understand. Jesus was the Messiah, the one he had been waiting for. And Jesus' mission was to give new life. Jesus went on to say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus also told Nicodemus that he didn't come to condemn the world, but the world would be saved through him. That day, Nicodemus learned about God's love and about eternal life. He believed and found his place in the kingdom of God. The end. Let us pray. Loving God, we are here to listen to your message. Please use me as a means of delivering your holy word. In your holy name, I pray. Amen. There are some precious and powerful parallels between a human adoption and God's adoption. God adopted me 30 years ago. It was very precious and very powerful, and there are some amazing non-parallels. But to look at the some parallels, first one, the child who is adopted called the parents, mom and dad. And I call daddy. In my most painful and desperate intimate moment, I need God and I call God Abba and Daddy. And then second, the when the child is adopted, 
the child gets the name after the father's last name. And I bear God's name. I am a Christian because I follow Christ, who is God. And then third, the parent disciplines the child who is adopted. God has disciplined me. In fact, I believe that under the sovereignty of God, some hardship, some trial, some loss may be disciplined from my father, in my spiritual father, in my life for my everlasting good. And then lastly, the parent provides for the adopted child all the way along as the parents provide for the adopted child, God has provided me, provide for me everything that I have ever needed because He said He would. My God, we supply everything according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That is in Philippians in chapter 4 and 19. And he never, ever has failed. Not every want is supplied, but every need I have needed to do his will and honor his name. It's been there and it will be for those who are for the four parallels between the human adoption of a child and God's adoption of me and you if you are in Christ. Now what I want to talk about is one of non-parallels. God is adopting us differently than the way we adopt our children. And you could say this comparison is infinitely different. And it might be the challenge for you. So I will tell you what it is. Then we'll go to the Bible to see what it says. The parent does not adopt the child in order that the child might spend the rest of his or her life making much of the parent. But God did adopt me and you for that, ultimately. God is forming a family priceless for the, the ultimate purpose that we, the family, would make much of our Father, magnify our Father, glorify our Father, hallow our Father, treasure our Father, and admire our Father above everything, including life itself. So, that's the difference. It's in the Bible. So, let's look at some scriptures. Lord's prayers in Matthew chapter 6 and verses 9 through 13, it says, pray like this. Our Father in heaven. Jesus is teaching us how to pray to our Father. It's amazing. The Creator, the universe is our Father. So this prayer, as you know, it goes, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Jesus is teaching us how to pray to our Father, not to God in general, but to God as our Father. The first three statements our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come.
come, your will be done. Those who are with breath, those are petitions just as much I need and I want and I want you to do this in me and through me as the other four are so that it will be huge change. Actually, it's related to the other petitions. <coughs> Hallowing of God's name is the first because it's ultimate and all the others is going there. So we can replay it the way Jesus wants us to be thinking when we pray it. So this case in Pastor John Piper, he replayed the Lord's Prayer like this. Father, cause this is a petition, cause your kingdom to come. Because when everybody is gladly bowing down to your kingly authority, the central act of every human heart in that kingdom will be the hallowing of your name. Father, subdue all rebellion to your willing, your will, bring every human will on earth into submission to your will, the center of every human will then will be the hallowing of your name. Father, grab me enough food then or be rich guard me from the witches so that I have life and breath in order to hallow your name. Then Father, forgive my sins because if I don't have forgiveness from you, I'm going to be swept away in the condemnation Spend the, spend, spend the rest of my life blaspheming in hell rather than hallowing you and heaven. Oh God, please forgive my sins and make me a forgiving person. Father, keep me out of destructive temptation that would ruin my life and take away every inclination that I have ever felt to hallow your name. Father, guard me, guard me from the evil one who wants more than anything that I would live from my name and not yours. The hallowing his name is number one because it's ultimate and the goal of everything. You may have a question, what does hollow mean? The word hollow is literally sanctify. Used to all of the New Testament for the sanctify or make holy or regard as holy. We don't make God holy, but we regard him as holy. See him is holy, sense him is holy, standing all of him as holy. This is behind the word hollow. Sanctify your name, cause your name to be regarded as holy. Cause me to see it as a sacred and esteemed and honored and valued and cherished and treasured. Those are words that unpacked, hallowed, be your name. Not just see it, the devil see it. Remember, the devil said to Jesus, I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. So the demons regard him as a holy. It's crucial that we are not just regard him as a sacred and holy and cherished and honored and treasured, but that we feel it, that hallowing happens in the heart. 
hallowing happens in the heart, not in the hands first. If we hands may go up, do you know what is the meaning of this? When we praise the Lord, sometimes we hand, we lift up our hands. Do you know what is the meaning of this? That means surrender. I surrender to the Lord because you are the master. You are the Lord of the Lord. You are the Almighty God. That's why we hand, we lift up our hands. That is the sign and that is the fruit of hallowing. But if we goes up without the, our hands goes up without the heart, Jesus has some next words to say about that. These people hollow me, honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. If we are lifting our hands and our heart is not hollowing, cherishing and honoring and treasuring him above anything else. Those hands are hypocrite hands. That is empty hands. The hallowing of his name is an act of the heart, not just the regarding of the heart like the demons do, and not just the lifting of the hands like the Pharisees did, but cherishing of his name above all things like Christians do. His conclusion from the Sermon of the Lord's Prayer, God's almighty goal for us as our Father is a goal for which every other blessing in your life is given is so that we would honor, esteem, and value and treasure Him and His name above everything and everyone else so the parents did not adopt a child that the child would hallow their name but God adopted me and you so I would hallow his name that's ultimate difference The father's name is hollow in his children when his ch children are happy in him. More happy in him than health, more happy in him in marriage, more happy in him than children, more happy in him than money, more happy in him than success, more happy in him than life. How good he looks in the lives of people who find more satisfaction in God, God than anything, especially in the moments of loss and suffering. Our joy in the fathers is the way we experience his worth and beauty and greatness being satisfied in the Father. Let me tell you a story. My daughter, Tana, will be turned 13 on June. So my husband will buy 13 red roses for her birthday, which, has, which he has never done before. At the right moment, when we have our birthday dinner, he will bring them out, I mean that was to bring them out and he will say happy birthday Hannah. He does not usually do this. This would be unusual for her and she might say, why would you do this? Why, why, why would you do this? If he answers to her, because it's his duty, it's what he is expected to do. Fathers of daughters are supposed to do for their daughters. If he does not do it, he might have a guilty conscience. And so he's doing his duty. If he answers like that, I think that you get an intuitive, you know, that's really bad answer. 
What's wrong with the duty for goodness sake? There was the joyless duty does not honor her. Joyless duty does not make much of her. You know that. So what has God to change for her to feel honored? Can you guess? That is love. What was the right answer when Hannah asked her father, why did you do that, Daddy? The right answer would be something like, because I just enjoy spending time with you and kind of showing you in that time that is special. I love to be with you. You make me glad and how would you? And then how would she feel? She would feel honored and she would feel my daddy prized me and my daddy loves me. My daddy is making much of me because he delights to be with me. Finding joy in another person honors that person. Being glad in another person glorifies that person. Enjoying the person is a form of esteem for them and they feel it. Satisfied in someone's persons and someone's persons magnifies their significance to you. That's the way it is with our Father in heaven. That's how we glorify him and hallow his name, magnify his worth, namely by delighting in him and enjoying him and being satisfied in him and above all things finding him to be our supreme treasure. Our Father's name is most hallowed in us when we are most happy in him. Every morning your goal should be acknowledging Father through Jesus and his work on the cross by the Holy Spirit. And this should be your prayer. Lord, I am now seeking in you that I would begin this day and live this day full of restful satisfaction in all that you are for me in Jesus. It's not selfish to want to be happy in God. It's the number one pursuit of your life. God, our Father, is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in Him. So why don't you glorify God's name in gladness in God? And why don't you share the gladness in God with others this week? Let us pray. Father, come and by your spirit, awaken hearts, quicken your life in hearts that have no delight in you, no pleasure in you, no satisfaction in you, for whom my language is not enough to deliver your heart. I pray that a miracle would happen for many and that those of us who have tasted what it is to have you as our Father, as our supreme treasure, would be the main stable and strong and unshakable in those two in days to come. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
lives who are experiencing drug and alcohol addiction issues. Um, it's located in Baltimore. We have a bluegrass concert coming up Saturday. And we really need help uh, with prepping goodies to bring to it in showing up to help us with it. And on Friday night at 6, we're going we're gonna to be here to set up for it. So um, if you are able to support us in any way with any of those things, we really need your help. There's a sign-up sheet for stuff to bring in the back. So um, please help us out. Have all sorts of stuff we need, and we forgot to put. We need change too. Yes, I did. I thought about it on the way to church this morning. Um, and we also, if you take a look, um, our graphic designer Tim Blizzard has really done a beautiful. Career tech center. Yeah, whatever. You could just say thanks. Um, so we have a really cool flyer about our. We have four bluegrass concerts coming up over the course of the summer and fall. They're all on this flyer, which is really great. And um, I bet if we talk to Tim, we could have some of those flyers to put about in places. They're in the back. We can, we can get them, so um, feel free. Um, and so, hmm? Tim has hot dogs, so we're good to go. Also coming up, um, on June 19th, um, Zion Church in Shipley is having their annual Sunday School Picnic. They're doing it a little bit differently. Um, you have to pre-order items and then you come pick them up. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So um, we also have a flyer for that. Or a, and it's actually an order sheet that you can fill out for that. Um, so we have that. Is that up in the back? Or mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So that is that. Um, other announcements? Yes. We served food kitchen yesterday and sent to everyone who gave money food, lots of it came and Friday and yesterday. We served all 75 meals mm -hmm. with food stamps. Mm -hmm. Went really well. Lots of folks there yes. yesterday, more than usual. So they that was. They were waiting for us. They were waiting. In the rain. In the rain. So, um, so that was really good. Um, and again, we have those quarterly here or there. When's our next one? I think October. We think it's in October. We need you guys to help with those things. So um, we'll let you know and, and uh, recruit you as we get closer. Other announcements? Oh, yes. Uh, the next week, that is the first Sunday of June, and I, we would like to celebrate those who are the celebrate and recognize those who are graduate They're from high school or uh, college or graduate school. Please give me, send me the information, and then we can recognize next Sunday. All right? Yep. Great. Yes. Our joy. We are, we are happy to have you. It was really cute. I was here when they were setting it up. It looked really nice. So that was neat. All right. Okay. So what's next? Offering. <laughs> Please stand for the class.
We do so now to remind ourselves of our many sisters and brothers, your many children, who need hope and care. Use our gifts to each other with the story of your great love for all our world. Amen. Our closing hymn is Here I Am, Lord, on page 593.
Have a great week, folks. Take care of each other. And it was a happy Memorial Day. <laughs>